I won't stop till I hear him say Behind the scenes and placing their hands in crypto because why? Remember from the BNY Mellon PDF, we are early. And these banking institutions know that. Okay, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another CyperX video breakdown. In today's video breakdown, we're going to be diving into the fundamentals surrounding crypto regulation and everything that has been going on in the market lately. There has been a lot of negative sentiment around the cryptocurrency space with the ongoing litigations from the SEC that have been just dumping into the market back to back to back. So we're going to be discussing that in today's video breakdown. If you all enjoy video breakdowns like this, make sure that you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. We do appreciate the love and the support. And if you find this video informational or others like it that we have displayed on our CyberX pages, we ask that you do us a favor, copy the link to this video and share it with a friend or family member. That would be greatly appreciated. So before we get started, I always just jump into the fundamentals. And here on the CyperX pages, this is, in my personal opinion, one of the best places to come and find valuable crypto information or trading information in general. Learning about the crypto regulation space can be beneficial to retail traders in several ways, and you all have to understand that. Now, nothing that I talk about here in this video breakdown is regulatory guidance or financial advice. This is simply just information that you all can find amongst yourselves. This is my perspective on what's going on. Again, trying and attempting to shed some light on the current situation and show you all that not everything that's displayed to the general public is what's actually going on behind the scenes. You see all these mainstream articles talking about the SEC did this and the SEC did that. Come to find out that these ongoing litigations in the SEC aren't the actual things moving the cryptocurrency market as of right now. So piecing all of that together, I'm going to show you all to have a long-term perspective and vision in this market space and understand that the major institutional players, the big key players are telling you all to follow the breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs are is that crypto is here to stay. So don't allow all of this SEC confusion and what's going on right now to kind of scare you. However, you should look into it because learning about crypto regulation can give you the ability to understand the rules and regulations around crypto trading and can help you avoid legal issues and penalties. Obviously, of course, that's an important thing, right? They can also help you be aware of regulatory developments, ongoing things, which is some things that we're going to speak about in today's video. They can also give you the knowledge of regulatory requirements in your jurisdiction, your country, or your area. And then they can also give you and bring you awareness of regulatory frameworks that are potentially being developed that will affect the global cryptocurrency market space. So take that into consideration as we're diving through these fundamentals. The first one that I have for you today, and we're going to take ourselves down the rabbit hole with this one right here and ask ourselves some questions. Is the U.S. really falling behind in crypto adoption or are they just making it out to be that way, right? They're making it out to seem like that's the case. If you all remember back in October 19th, 2022, this article came out and then it kind of calls a spiral effect up into where we are now in the crypto space. This article reads, EU commissioner urges the U.S. to create new crypto rules, says we need to look at global crypto regulation. EU commissioner calls on the U.S. lawmakers to establish new crypto rules. Mary McGinnis, the European commissioner for financial services, talked about cryptocurrency regulation in an interview with Financial Times. Referencing the markets and crypto assets, the Mika bill, which we'll get into in just one second, which has been postponed, I believe, until now April, that will provide a regulatory framework for crypto across countries in the European Union. She stressed that any regulation imposed on the crypto industry would need to be global in order to work. The commissioner elaborated, we do need to see other players also legislating perhaps differently, but with the same objective. We need to look at global crypto regulation, of course. McGinney urges U.S. lawmakers to draw up sweeping new rules to govern the crypto industry. So think about this again as soon as this came out, October 19, 2022. Real fast, just to take a pause. Uh, if you aren't aware of the MICA bill, key EU Parliament Committee approved MICA deal to regulate crypto. The MICA deal, the European Parliament Committee on the Economic and Monetary Affairs, ECON, has approved a provisional deal on a landmark legislation, legislation excuse me, tailored to regulate the European Union crypto space. So we're going to get into this in just one second, and I'm going to show you all how the adoption of cryptocurrency is on hold and being postponed because of this stall in regulation. 
and how we as retail investors can kind of piece together when this mass adoption is really going to flood into the space. It says here, the vote in which 28 members were in favor and only one against comes ahead of the parliament's vote on the new framework. So we're going to get into this in one second, but I want you all to consider, okay, Everybody in the crypto space right now is bullish this, bullish that, bullish this. You really understand regulatory implications in this market space and that that is what, when these things come into a greener perspective, that means the green light for institutions to actually come into the space, that is when we will see major adoption. And I'm going to show you again, a major institutional player saying the same exact things, backing the claims that I'm making. So you all don't think that I'm just making that up and trying to you know, postpone some bull market that all these bullish moon boys are talking about. I'm a firm believer that in the future, we are going to see a utility bull run, by the way. Okay. I hold many different utility driven assets. And so just so you guys don't think I'm being a bearish individual, right? I'm actually bullish long-term. I'm just trying to give my viewers a realistic perspective of what's going on. So remember when this came out real fast, okay, back to October 19, 2022, right? We head over here. This article came out literally days after the EU urged the US to broaden crypto regulation or to put a firmer foot on crypto regulation, right? The U.S. currency comptroller to up its game with a new office of financial technology in 2023, which I believe is yet to be announced. We haven't seen any other announcements on this as of right now that at least I could find. It says the United States Office of the Comptroller of the Currency announced on October 27th that it will create an office of financial technology early next year. And it goes on to talk about this potential new office of technology that the Office of the Comptroller is going to set up. Interestingly enough, though, it came out right when the EU urged regulators in the United States to kind of pick it up a bit, right? So back to MICA, all right? MICA is set to be voted into law in 2023. This is another reason I'm reading this to you all is because this is why institutional adoption is stalled right now because these regulators continuously postpone major events like this back and institutions need these type of regulations before they can physically put money into the market. They cannot do it. They can't be retail investors where we don't really operate inside of the financial legality world, right? We don't, we don't, we don't have barriers to entry. Okay. Whereas these financial institutions, they have to meet a whole bunch of requirements. They have to follow a whole bunch of rules in order to put money into an up and emerging asset class. So this reads, the European Parliament has delayed the vote until the bill until February, excuse me, 2023. If it receives formal approval from the Council of the EU, the legislation will be published in the EU official journal and take effect 20 days later. Now, this was interesting right here. It says, however, organizations and firms will have 18 months transitional periods before the regulation outlined in MICA comes into effect. So whenever this bill does come into effect, don't be one of those bullish moon boys that says, oh, now that this bill's into effect, institutions are just going to pour in. You can see right here that there's an 18-month transitional period before any of these regulators and things outlined in MICA actually come to effect, right? It will be a step forward, however, in regulation, in my personal opinion. So coming over here to talk about the delay, it says vote on EU's landmark and MICA crypto bill delayed again. The European Union's MICA crypto bill will now be put forward preliminary approval in April after first being delayed to February. So they're continuously pushing this thing back, which is bad for institutional adoption because they see that this space is unregulated. So with the MICA thing out of the way, I'm going to read something to you real fast just to give you kind of a bullish perspective. But before we jump into that, all right, we'll head back to MICA in just one second. Remember, we started on this fundamental right here. EU commissioner urges the U.S. to create new crypto rules, says we need to look at global regulation of crypto. Remember, at the beginning of this, I told you all that there's something going on behind the curtains that they're not discussing to the mainstream media, right? They're making it seem like to the mainstream media that crypto is scary to get into or that institutional players are not adopting crypto or blockchain technology and that these major institutional players are sitting on the sidelines and you as a retail investor should not touch crypto because it's scary and you're going to lose all your money, right? Well, with that being said, I want to take your attention over here to a BNY Mellon PDF. This BNY Mellon PDF is from way back in 2019, 2020 timeframe. And it has some very interesting key highlights on it that I want to bring your attention to based off of where we are currently at in the market space now and some things that BNY Mellon has just recently announced to the general public that isn't really going mainstream. Again, because they want to draft your attention towards the fear in the market to keep you out. So 
This is again, like I said, a BNY Mellon PDF. You guys can see BNY Mellon at the top. Interestingly enough, the background of this PDF kind of looks like the matrix. I won't throw that conspiracy theory in there, but you guys know that I like that type of stuff. So keep that in the back of your mind. Coming down here, actually, you know, we'll save page three for the last part. On page five, it says to date, there are currently more institutional investors moving into the space, but it's still a very early stage. That is coming directly from BNY Mellon back in 2019, 2020, right? When this PDF came out. Heading down here, it goes on to say, the market is evolving rapidly across a number of dimensions, products, technologies, and regulation. This is where it gets interesting. It says, to date, no large custodian banks offer custody for digital currencies. There are cryptocurrency custodians operating with trust licenses and financial service licenses, but none with deposit-taking bank license, says Tom's BNY Mellon's global head of custody product management. So that is where it gets interesting. Um, other key little snippets real fast. This is new research from Fidelity shows 22% of institutional investors already have exposure to digital assets. Then it says, until regulators reach a consensus about cryptocurrency, investments from large institutions are unlikely to happen. So to kind of back my thesis again, this is BNY Mellon telling you that institutions are not going to come into the space until regulators reach some type of consensus. But what I want you all to focus on is right here, where back in 2019, 2020, they were saying to date, no large custodian banks offer custody for digital currencies. Do you all remember that in 2022, okay, what happened? The EU came out and told the US that they need to kick up their regulatory game, okay? Well, check this out. BNY Mellon right here, you all can see back in 2022, in the same month in October, right? October 11, 2022, when did the EU come out and say this? In October 2022, just to correlate the dates. Back in 2019, 2020, BNY Mellon was doing what? Telling the world through their PDFs, again, which aren't publicly announced to the general public, you have to go and actually search them, that there are no crypto custodian banks from large institutions or on the large institutional side of things. Well, remember this came out. BNY Mellon starts crypto custody service. The custodial lender early this fall received approval from financial regulators in New York to begin holding Bitcoin and Ether for certain customers. You all have to understand what is being manipulated through the masses, through the media. It is this perspective that crypto is bad and it's not happening. When in reality, these major bank and institutions are moving frivolently behind the scenes, hopefully that's a word frivolently, behind the scenes and placing their hands in crypto because why? Remember from the BNY Mellon PDF, we are early. And these banking institutions know that. So while the SEC is coming out, with claims like this, talking about cracking down on cracking for um, staking privileges and whatnot, and, and talking about this that just came out, breaking Paxos reportedly ordered to stop issue Binance USD. Retail traders, they see this and they get flooded out of the market. They get scared because they don't know how to manage their emotions properly and they withdraw their positions from the crypto space. Don't touch it again. Oh my gosh, it's a scam. All right. When in reality, let's take, for example, the whole Kraken situation. Did it really have a negative effect on the markets? Yes. Okay. The crypto markets depreciated in value a tiny bit, but compared to some other liquidation events that we've experienced in the market, it wasn't really that bad of a situation and also didn't really have an effect on Kraken's trading volume throughout the day. This article reads, despite SEC troubles, Kraken trading volume climbs double digits. Data extracted from CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko revealed that Kraken's 24-hour trading volume after the incident stands at around $757 million or a 14% increase. So the trading volume on Kraken actually increased. Meanwhile, to the general public, the retail herded trader sees it as a negative thing that took place. Again, it is a positive thing because although, yes, it seems bad, there is still some type of regulatory footprint coming into this market space. Where now we have a set of rules. We now know that Kraken cannot offer staking options to residents in the United States, right? It also says, based on numerous factors, including average liquidity volume and web traffic, the company collects a score of 7.4 out of 10, making it the third most trusted crypto platform after Binance. So retail traders, again, won't take the initiative and to go out and dig a little bit deeper. Because all while this is all happening, okay, do you all remember as soon as as all of these negative things started coming out by the SEC, this article dropped a few days prior. BNY Mellon executive says crypto assets are here to stay with high level investor interest. And the report goes on to read. I won't get into that, but just to show you all again, the perspective from the institutional players and the perspective from the retail herd. Okay. Now, if you're not going to believe it from BNY Mellon, 
And remember I said at the beginning of this call that institutional players are moving behind the scenes while the mainstream media is funding out retail traders. Look at this article over here from Morgan Stanley. They say the same exact thing as BNY Mellon. It says right here on page one of this PDF, it says, we see a fundamental reason to believe that regardless of where the price of Bitcoin goes next, cryptocurrencies are here to stay as a serious asset class. Boom. Don't want to believe Morgan Stanley? How about Goldman Sachs? They say, we've crossed the line. Why Goldman Sachs says crypto is here to stay. You now have three major institutions that are utilizing the same exact vocabulary. Why do they do this? I've broken that down for you all in previous video breakdowns. How major institutional key players and these elite individuals utilize the same exact vocabulary to tell you the same exact message across the board. Now, if you're not going to believe BNY Mellon, if you're not going to believe Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, take it upon yourself to go look in your wallet. And most likely what you have is a Visa debit card or MasterCard, right? Well, here is a PDF directly from Visa that says at the top of the PDF, real-time payments are changing the way money moves among consumers and businesses. And right down here on page five, it says, a seismic shift is underway to modernize payments around the world. And if you're not going to believe Visa, then maybe you'll hear it from the Council of the European Union. Remember, we talked about the MICA, right? Or the M-I-C-A. Well, here is the micro proposal. It goes on to say on page five, this is the most interesting part, in my personal opinion, of all 380 pages of this MICA document. It says, it is important to ensure that the union's financial service legislation is fit for the digital age and contributes to a future ready economy that works for the people, including by enabling the use of innovative technologies the union has stated and confirmed policy interests in developing and promoting the uptick in transformative technologies in the financial sector, including distributed ledger technology. Crypto assets are one of the major distributed ledger technology applications. Crypto assets are digital representations of value or rights that have the potential to bring significant benefits to both market participants and retail holders of crypto assets. So hopefully this mega bill goes through in April a change is coming and it will behoove you all to do your research on what's really going on behind the scenes, what utility driven assets could potentially play a role in modernizing our current payment infrastructure. With that being said, if you all enjoyed this video breakdown, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, do your research, be cognizant, be aware, do not get footed out of the market. Make sure that you're doing research on utility driven crypto assets. I cannot stress enough not to just go dump your money into whatever asset floats your boat because you saw about it on Twitter or YouTube. Make it a habit to do research and invest because it's something that you believe in. With that being said, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you guys to go out there and buy or sell crypto. I'm just simply here as an influencer providing value to you all in the form of information. If you all found this informative, do us a favor, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, copy the link of this video and share it with a friend or family member. And I will see you all in the next video breakdown. I won't stop till I hear him say, oh, oh.